Hey, Nation Nation, Harry here with longtime SMB Nation uh, member Dan King out of the state of Oregon at New West Technologies. Hey, man, that's really cool. We have known each other for quite a while. <laughs> quite a while, De several decades, it seems like. Yeah. Well, th this is a different kind of podcast because usually we're double clicking down into some, you know, stack or segment or solution. Um, this is a little bit different with your work with the Goodwill uh, in, in, a, in a professional capacity. And you just blew me away when you talked about the orchestration that goes on in Goodwill with their workflow. Go. What's the story? Well, it's uh, kind of an exciting one from our perspective. The, uh, it's a unique business, you know? I mean, I think we all wish we could uh, get our products for free, uh, which is what they do. Uh, but <laughs> it, it lends itself to a lot of challenges, really, because they never know what they're going to get or when they're going to get it. Um, and uh, that puts them in a spot where it's very hard to, to, to manage inventory and to, to do the intake of the inventory as well. So, um, of course, the Goodwill's missions are uh, pretty commonly built around trying to help people get back into the workforce. Yeah, and I've seen that. Help a lot of people, and it's a really great organization. Um, but that in itself presents its own unique challenges because oftentimes they have uh, workers that are less skilled. Uh, many of them are, you know, not uh, English as their first language speakers. Um, so there's uh, a great need to automate some of their workflow and to make that automation very clean and easy to use, easy to train on, because they also have a great deal of churn in terms of these folks. They get them in there, they train them up, they get them out in the workforce, and then they're, you know, on to the next uh, person or group of people. Uh, so there's a lot of churn. And, and so we spent quite a bit of time with one of the first Goodwills that we went through this exercise with. Um, and uh, they hired a great guy who was a, uh, like a operational efficiency expert. He had a PhD and something of that nature. And so we went through and uh, I don't know, spent several months analyzing exactly how they operate from end to end. What happens when something hits the back dock? Where does it go? How does it get sorted? You know, how do they get it into the system? How do they track it? How do they move it around store to store? Because uh, most of these folks are uh, generally running a number of stores, maybe eight, uh, a lot yeah. of the sort of more powerful ones are, they're up like 25, 30 stores. And so they're, you know, and not all of those are donation centers. So some of them are donation centers and that's where they, they say that those ones are, they produce there. Uh, and other ones just simply are stores that sell. Um, so we spent a lot of time looking at their processes, looking at the workflows, trying to figure out uh, what they were doing today and how we could help them, you know, be better, faster, more efficient and get better data out of their system tomorrow. Yeah, I almost imagine, well, we're, we're, we are talking about a supply chain here. So I'm almost imagining labeling and barcoding and tagging and tracking. And I, I, I have to assume there's some of that going on at some level. There is. Yeah. So we actually put together uh, a specialty vertical app that sits on top of uh, an out of the box point of sale solution. An inventory control solution where these folks, um, if you can imagine, they're just they're putting things on racks and then they're just, they're tasked with the idea of tagging them with a barcode and pricing the item. So okay. maybe it's a woman's shirt and it's either good, better, or best quality. And depending upon that, they uh, they figure out what the price level is for it. So these folks, uh, you know, it's kind of a it's kind of a big job because if they don't price it right, it doesn't sell. And it winds up going to the outlet center and gets sold by the pound. Yeah. Um, so, they're, so they're pretty curious about trying to make sure these guys are pricing it right and, and making it easy for them to do. So essentially what we did was we built a solution where um, they just go up to a screen. It's all sort of up and running for them. And, and they say, okay, well, I've just produced 100 uh, women's shirts that are better. And it prints out 100 tags, barcoded, and essentially serialized. Uh, so yeah. it's a granular, it's a granular tracking down the garment itself and it has a price on it. And then they go tag those items. And then when they get through with those shelves or those racks, they figure out, okay, well, it wasn't quite a hundred, maybe, maybe there was only 89 of these shirts. Uh, so they have to correct the inventory because when they print the barcodes, it creates essentially a transfer in or it's essentially like receiving a PO. So it, it, it fills, fills inventory in the store uh, and so on and so forth. 
And so when they get done and realize they only used 89 of those tags, they go back and say, okay, well, I still have 11 left. And then that balances it out and pulls the other 11 out of inventory. Yeah. Yeah, man, really sophisticated. I, here's where I sit in terms of uh, my donation strategy. And I've, I've uh, morphed a little bit along the way. So in the past, I only went to Goodwill. Okay. Um, and, and don't get me wrong. I'm a supporter and is back on Bainbridge Island and you had to get there before noon because the container truck would fill up is over in the Ace Hardware parking lot. So there, there was a little bit of a dance uh, to do with that. And then um, over the last year or so, spoke with someone who said, you know, uh, with some of the, uh, the clothing and maybe silverware, we'd like you to consider um, the, the Catholic charity Saint, uh, I, I'm going to say Saint, Saint Vincent. Yeah, Saint Vincent. I was going to say Saint Francis of Assisi, but that's for dogs and cats. Um, that's the animal person. <laughs> but so what I've done, and again, respectfully, but I've I've started to think about my donation strategy, maybe like a billionaire would, right? That they say billionaires put as much time into thinking about their giving as they did to making it, right? And some popular names you and I know, but it's it's not random, right? That there's there's kind of a strategy. And so that, that's what I've been thinking about. And then uh, the, the Catholic charity, they're not as interested in the business donation, the, the file cabinet, the maybe even some of the uh, furniture. They're, they, they were more interested in things that were here and now, right? That get clothing on somebody now. <laughs> yeah. If, if that makes sense. So, um, but, you know, I'll continue to uh, uh, give as I'm able to, to goodwill and, um, I just wanted to add that value to the listeners that folks um, give goodwill a, a fair shake now that you know their sophisticated operation and, 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 and quite frankly, doing good work. But whatever you do, pick a strategy and uh, give back to the community or as we say, send the elevator back down. <laughs> yeah, it's true. There are a number of these organizations, St. Vincent de Paul, you've got uh, Savers, uh, and, and there's, there's quite a few of them. And, and they're all trying to do some good work out there. Yeah, uh, yeah trying absolutely. to help people and, and use those donations uh, as best they can to, to you know, help the community around them. All right, my friend. Well, we're going to see you back out on the road uh, before you know it at some industry events. So uh, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Yeah. Great to talk to you again. We'll see you soon. All right.